Hey guys, and welcome to GP Academia. You can use mathematical tools to reconstruct a 3D representation of the anatomy being image. And this is done first by acquiring multiple 2D projection images from many angles. With this imaging principle, we acquire 3D images in medical imaging modalities uh, such as computed tomography or CT, positron emission tomography or PET, and single photon emission tomography or SPECT. Modern medical imaging systems incorporate a more complex iterative reconstruction techniques. But for this lecture, I will focus on analytic reconstruction uh, traditionally used in medical imaging. Let's start this discussion. And this is the outline of this video lecture. Okay, so let's start with this expression for the attenuated intensity I sub D detected by the detector system after the X-ray passes through the patient's body. For a given effective energy, we have this expression. Uh, then we can rewrite this in terms of this natural logarithm expression. The left-hand side of this uh, expression below, this one, refers to our measured quantity given that we know the value of I sub D, this one, uh, coming out from the patient. Then we have the value of I sub naught taken from the CT's air calibration. Using the mathematical expression I have shown earlier, we can define projection as the negative logarithm of the fractional X-ray transmittance of the object, so this one. And this is based on this figure. We have here the X prime Y prime frame, which is the rotated coordinates uh, with respect to our X-ray source such that the source is placed along the y prime axis and our detector is placed along the x prime this one then we have this parallel projection and oh we need to get this projection by measuring it along the detector system many medical imaging systems can only measure projections through an object let's see our object has a density of this function f as a function of x and y. Projections must be collected at every angle, theta, so this one, and displacement r. So we have here the object space, uh, we have the object, the one in blue, and this is the object space in x and y, and we have this rotated coordinates, and we want to get this projection for every angle, theta, and for every displacement r, so this one, the length of our detector, and we'll call this projection, the forward projection, p theta, is a function of r. And this is known as the Redon transform. Object can have varying values of attenuation coefficient, and therefore we will have a certain profile that will be collected based on that attenuated photons. Objective of this reconstruction is to reverse the process. We want to get the, or we want to reconstruct the original image, this one. So let's say the original image is the function f. And we can do this by doing first the Fourier slice theorem or through the direct reconstruction using the Fourier slice theorem. And second, we have the convolution back projection. And now, in discussing CT reconstruction, we have these two main concepts. First, we have the Fourier slice theorem which is said to be the heart of the CT reconstruction. And this is the basis of the second concept, the filtered back projection, also known as the convolution back projection. Let's discuss first the Fourier slice theorem, or the direct reconstruction using this theorem. It is difficult to implement this in practice, but uh, let's try to discuss this first. We have this object function, the one in blue place in the x and y coordinates and we have this projection let's see the one we acquired using our ct machine and we'll describe this projection as a function p as a function of x then applying a 2d Fourier transform we will get its counterpart in the Fourier domain in practice we don't know yet the object uh, the object function but we know but what we know are the set of projections from the line integral uh, we have discussed previously. It is stated in the Fourier slice theorem 
that the one dimensional Fourier transform of the projection function, this one, or the P, uh, also known as the detector function, is the same with the slice at the 2D Fourier representation of our object function in blue. So this one, after we do 1D Fourier transform, this is equivalent to this slice uh, in our Fourier domain. In addition, it is the line at the origin from the same angle theta. Theoretically, we can do direct reconstruction with Fourier slice theorem by just acquiring different projection data. So we'll acquire different projection at different angles. Then we will do 1D Fourier transform. Then we will form this one. Then what we can do is to inverse Fourier transform uh, this one to go to the object space or to get the object function. But it is difficult to implement in reality. Then we have the convolution back projection shown here. And this is what we usually use. It is very efficient and therefore this is widely used. Instead of doing an inverse Fourier transform, it applies an operation called the convolution. Uh, and this is used to filter or to remove the blurring before smearing back the projection across the image at the angle it was acquired. So we have this uh, projection data from various uh, angles. Then we smear them out to reconstruct our image. In discussing analytic methods, uh, we have these three domains. First, the object space. The object space refers to the linear attenuation values of our object or of our patient. Second, we have the Radon space. Radon space refers to the projection values recorded under many angles. So let's say uh, from 0 to 180 degrees. This is also known as the sinogram or sometimes sinogram space. Third, we have the Fourier space. And we can derive this one from the object space by doing a 2D Fourier transform. The three spatial domains are interrelated and their relationships can be described mathematically. 2D Fourier transform converts the object space into radon space. The generation of 2D radon space happens during a CT scan uh, where, let's say, projections are recorded as raw data in various angles. And therefore, we will have this 2D radon transform. Then from the radon, trans or the, from the radon space, we can get the 1D Fourier transform to go to the Fourier space. We will find the equation for the projection and uh, we can consider this scenario or this object. So we have this object function or the original image, which is f as a function of these uh, positions, x and y. And we have this rotated coordinate system, which refers to the detector system. So this r and we have this theta. So we are acquiring uh, projections in this angle theta. We are taking the integral along the z uh, direction. However, we can only access the image value in the x, y coordinate, which is, which is this one, or the object space. Thus, we have to change the r, z to the x, y coordinates. The projection integral in terms of the rotated coordinate system. So we, uh, we have this uh, matrix or the rotation counterclockwise rotation matrix. And we have this expression to rotate our coordinates. And therefore, uh, we have this expression for the projection acquired in this rotated system. You can interpret this integral expression as the projection of the object along the detector length r, so this one, and angle theta. Note that in this case, r is equal to 0 corresponds to the point x, y is equal to 0, 0, or the origin of our object space. So the origin is the same with r is equal to 0. So this one is called the Redon transform of this function f or this is just the projection. Okay, so now we have here 
an illustration on how we acquire the projection data at different angles. This is specific actually for SPECT or Single Photon Emission Computed Tomography uh, acquisition wherein we acquire information regarding the distribution of radio tracer inside the body of the patient based on the emission through gamma rays. In CT, we know that we are acquiring the intensity or the attenuated photon as it passes through the patient. And uh, in this case, we have here uh, true emission instead of the transmitted data. But uh, CT scan works similarly in terms of acquisition and reconstruction, except that the attenuated X-rays at one side of the patient is collected. Thus, CT scan is a transmission imaging. So here uh, we have the acquisition of signal at different angles. So we have this uh, rotating detector. We have this uh, projection at different angles. Then we have this sinogram, or this is just the radon space. We have here the theta. So here we have from, uh, let's say, 0 to 180 degrees. Then the pattern will repeat. And we have here the projection uh, signals. Now I will discuss here the Fourier slice theorem, also called the central slice theorem or the projection slice theorem. I will not show here the proof, but here is the general idea. We have this projection function, or this is just the data that we have acquired when we place our detector along R, then uh, we acquired projections at different angle theta. If we get the 1D Fourier transform of this function, or it's just the continuous time Fourier transform, we will get this projection uh, function in terms of rho, which is just a frequency domain. We can also get the 2D Fourier transform or the continuous space Fourier transform of our object function f. And we will have this representation of our object function in the Fourier or in the frequency domain. Now, given those things, we will have this relationship. So therefore, this projection in terms of the Fourier space or in terms of the variable rho is equal to a certain line or to a certain slice in this 2D Fourier function. So therefore, uh, if this is the space for, for the object's uh, 2D Fourier transform, this one here, the slice, refers to this projection. And this is in terms of polar coordinates. So that's why we have this one in terms still of this theta uh, wherein we acquired this projection or this angle wherein we acquired this specific projection. And here's a summary of the Fourier slice theorem. If this is our object, we can acquire the projection at different angles in terms of P theta as a function of R. Then if we get the 1D Fourier transform of this, we will get this projection in terms of the frequency variable rho. And this refers to a slice here in the 2D Fourier function. If we do a 2D Fourier transform of our object function, or this is just the continuous space Fourier uh, transform. And therefore, uh, this slice refers to this. And if we get the slices, or if we get the projection at different angles, we can get the different slices of our 2D Fourier transform Thus, what we can do theoretically is just to get the inverse of this to go back to our object function. Here's a summary of the reconstruction using the Fourier slice theorem. This is the projection uh, function and this is the directly measurable quantity for our physical system. If we get the continuous time for the transform of this projection function, we will get this projection function in terms of the frequency variable rho. Now, we said that uh, in the Fourier slice theorem, this one refers to the slices in terms of the 2D Fourier transform of our object function f, so function of x and y. So therefore, if we acquired different projection for different angles, then if we do 1D Fourier transform for those projections, we will acquire the slices of this 2D Fourier uh, function for our object function. 
Now, we can get the inverse of this to get our object function f. But the problem here is our data, the projection, is in polar coordinate or this are polar data. And we know that in terms of the fast Fourier transform or in using the fast Fourier transform, we need rectangular samples or grid samples. So what we do is interpolation. But the problem is that interpolation is computationally uh, expensive. And uh, but again, uh, around the center or the origin of our Fourier uh, domain, we have very dense data. So we have or this refers to the low frequency signal of our image. And therefore, we have somehow accurate uh, signal uh, for the low frequency. But as you go away from the origin, this refers to the higher frequency signals of our image. And we have fewer data in this area. And therefore, uh, it can cause uh, blurring or lower accuracy for our image if we do interpolation. And that's the problem. To avoid the problem of interpolation and the need to do an inverse Fourier transform, what we can do is a convolution back projection or the filtered back projection. And this is uh, commonly implemented with the following steps. So first, we measure the projection along the line as shown here. Then we filter the projection using a high uh, pass filter and at each angle, projections are filtered first. So we have here the convolution expression. This is our projection and this is our filter. This is our projected uh, or this is our filtered projections. And this is an example of the high pass filter that we can use. So the frequency response of the filter is described by this H. Uh, but in real filters also, we, sh we should take note that it is band limited to a certain cutoff frequency F c or f sub c then uh, we do back projection so back projection is smearing the signal so we smear out uh, in the different direction after we have filtered our uh, projection function so this is the illustration back projection is a method wherein we smear the measured profile associated with each angle of acquisition across the image. And this reconstruction strategy uh, alone results in a blurred image. So thus, filtering is needed. This shows the filtering of our sinogram, or this is just our projection data for different angles. This is a type of filter called the ramp filter, and this can be applied easily. It is simply a multiplication function in the frequency domain. Uh, before, uh, in the spatial domain, we do convolution, uh, convolution operation. And uh, we are working with discrete signal data here in medical imaging. And therefore, we can utilize FAST for a transform for fast and accurate transformation of data to and from the 40 space or to the frequency space. This corrects the blurring. So we have this one over our blurring effect that manifests during back projection as we have shown in the previous slide. After filtering back projection of the filtered sinogram will be done to have a better reconstructed image as depicted here. This process is called filtered back projection. Summary. First, our reconstructing the original image can be done using mathematical algorithms for image reconstruction. Convolution back projection or filtered back projection is based on the Fourier slice theorem and this is used traditionally in medical imaging. Uh, there are three domains associated with the technique of the filtered back projection. So we have the object space, radon space, and the Fourier space. And that's it for this video lecture. Thank you. Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, JP Academia. See you in the next video.